Well, good morning. Welcome to worship this morning at Carmichael Presbyterian Church. A wonderful morning for us to be together. Glad you all got up early, which means you are on time. Uh, we've got a little pool going to, to figure out who's going to be showing up an hour late. Um, if folks do show up an hour late, greet them, welcome them, and tell them that you're glad that they're there for coffee fellowship. Um, and let them know where the blue box is for offerings, that's right. But we are glad that you are here today for worship and uh, glad that you are joining us online as well as we worship God together in this community of faith. And um, my name is Ivan Herman, associate pastor here along with my colleague, Pastor Keith DeVries. And I hope that you have had a chance to let us know who you are by signing in as you've come in the door or by signing in online using the Google form and you can find the link uh, there in the bulletin to do that. If you take a look in the bulletin or the e-parish notes this morning, you will see a number of things happening in the life of the community that we celebrate. Today we return to the gathering place for our coffee fellowship time. So go in there and enjoy uh, being together following the service. Uh, grab a cup of coffee, have some conversation, enjoy some of the art uh, that's still on the walls. Uh, Art today, I think, by Daryl Torgerson and photographs by the McLeans. So enjoy that art display there. Uh, Sharon McLean will also be in there with her Opportunity Knox table. And it's an op it is an opportunity to see what it is that is needed around the community, uh, how to get engaged, where to get involved. Uh, check out that table as you go through the, uh, through the gathering place. Coming up in the uh, in next... Uh, next Saturday, March 19th, Chris Studer will be here with the worship team from First Presbyterian Church Santa Rosa, and they will be putting on a concert Saturday afternoon, and I believe uh, Dave Studer said that he's got tickets for that available, and you can get those tickets from him in the gathering place following this service today as well. But hope you all will join us for that uh, wonderful concert, and uh, the proceeds from that concert will go to benefit Carmichael Hart and... Um, and to uh, go to benefit also the CPC Centennial Fund as we get ready to celebrate our 100th anniversary next year. Sunday school begins again today for our kids, K through five. They will, right after the children's time, be pulled out to Sunday school. And I hope that, uh, I know we've got a bunch of kids here today. It's gonna be a, a lot of fun, and I hope that you all keep learning and growing with that experience, but that will keep going uh, every Sunday morning, except for those Sundays when we have communion, uh, when the kids will be all here together with us in worship the whole, the whole time. And then uh, a reminder that our Presbyterian Disaster Assistance Program is always responding to disaster needs and to refugee needs across the world. And so they are currently engaged in providing um, assistance through our ecumenical partners in Ukraine and Poland uh, to, to help refugees from Ukraine and Russia. So uh, I, you'll see on the back of the parish notes how you can pray, act, and give uh, to support the needs of this uh, disaster in our world today. And of course, they continue to do some amazing, wonderful work in long-term recovery all across our country and all across the world uh, is what they specialize in. So we can always receive your donations to that if that is something you want to give to and make a difference with. Glad that you are here this morning for this time of worship, and I would like to invite up Karen Treon as she helps lead us uh, in our call to worship and as our, our lady uh, reader this morning. Morning, please stand and join me for our call to worship. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Come seek God in this time of worship. Please sing with us.
When we cry to God in prayer and confession, God hears. Let us approach God's throne of grace with confidence and faith. Please join me in the unison prayer of confession. Eternal God, as enemies circle and fears grow large, the distance between us feels like absence, and we come to believe you are hidden and concealed. Forgive our doubt. Forgive our lack of spiritual seeking. Forgive us when we make our faith all about what you might do for us, rather than how we might serve you and work at right relationship with you. Amen. Please continue in silent prayers of confession. The Lord does not forsake us in our times of trial. Our God is a gracious God, abounding in steadfast love. Know that in Jesus Christ you are forgiven, and be at peace. Amen. I'd like to invite my young friends forward to sit up here in the steps with me, and my friends that are at home on their couches or in their living rooms. Uh, also, join us, all of us here on these steps. Good to see you. All right. All right. Oh, how's everybody doing? Huh? Did you guys, I understand you were doing some singing earlier. Yeah, was well, that good? Do that for, I haven't done that for a long time. Yeah, that's wonderful. Oh, cool. Hey, I want to talk about the word trust. Do you know what that word means? Yeah. What's it mean, Clark? Yeah, you believe in someone. Okay, that's exactly right. Um, so trust is like if you have a friend and you want to share something with them, but you're not sure that you can trust them. Ah, uh, so something may be confidential, but you can. But with a fr good friend, you, you you trust them, and they'll keep that to themselves. Okay. To trust is also when you know you rely on. If you say someone's going to come over and play at your house then you know with confidence that they're going to do that, right? They, they say they're going to do something, and then they do something. And that's, that's kind of what trust is all about, right? So who, who are the people in your life that you trust? Who? Um, I trust my parents. Trust your parents. Friends. And who? And my friends. And your friends. Okay. Charlotte, who do you trust? You trust her. Okay. Good. <laughs> That's good. How about over here? Who do you trust? Who do you trust, Ian? I trust her. You trust her? <laughs> All right. I trust my own mom and dad. You trust your mom and dad? Good. Who do you trust, Nell? Who? You should trust everyone. Okay. Yeah. Well, I need a volunteer. I need a brave volunteer. <laughs> A really brave, bra okay, you're my brave volunteer. Now, here's the first thing you have to answer is, who do you trust more, Pastor Keith or Pastor Ivan? <laughs> and you get to pick, so you have to make that decision, Gabe. Who do you trust more? Pa okay, Pastor <laughs> Ivan. All right, Pastor Ivan is trusted more. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to blindfold you, and you're going to go on a trust walk, and Pastor Ivan's going to lead you, and you won't be able to see anything, and you're going to have to do exactly what he says. Now remember, you said you trusted him the most. Okay, so... You made a mistake. You made a mistake. So we have, we have trust issues here. A what are you talking Say, face about? Face over there. Turn around. Here we go. Turn around. I trust both of you equally, which is like zero. Which is zero. Thanks, Ian. Yeah. Here, fist Which is zero? Uh, I trust Tim better. I trust you better. All right. Let's see. Okay, good. Doesn't that feel good? 
All right, Gabe, you got two steps down. Wait a minute, let me get him. Oh, oh, gonna... I'm not quite getting it all. There we go. I don't know if I trust Pastor Keith's blindfolding skills. Yeah, I don't either. Well, you close your eyes underneath that blindfold. Okay. okay. You ready? Yes. Yeah. All right. All right. Before we get started, oh, one, two, three. Okay. No peeking. No, 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 oh, you got yeah, it. no okay. peeking. No All right. peeking. Now you just listen to Pastor Ivan and do exactly what he tells so, you to do. Because you trust him. Take two steps forward. Okay. How about just keep going? Do you, do you trust me? You just keep going. No. No? <laughs> well, it's, it's a little harder to do than it is to say, right? Okay. Let's see. Keep going. All right, take one big step to the left. There you go. All right, take three steps. Oh, oh, okay, take another big step to the left. Okay, keep coming. All right, now uh, let's see. Uh, take, a, like, uh, I don't know, if you're looking at a clock, turn to two o'clock. Do you know where two o'clock is? No, okay. How about just turn a little bit to the right? There you go. Pastor now take Ivan's some steps forward. Keep, keep coming. Where are you going? Oh, no, where are you going? Oh, no, stop! Where are you going? Oh, no. oh. Oh, 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 okay, all oh, right. No. That's good, Pastor Ivan. Let's take it. Here we go. Good Bring job, it back. I don't all Do right. Do you know where you are? Oh, she says no, she doesn't do. trust any of you guys. <laughs> All right, thank you, Pastor Ivan. Thank you, Gabriel. Oh, my gosh. Well, the reason I thought we would have that fun game and find out who you really trust today is because I'm going to be reading from Psalm 27, and it talks about how we trust in the Lord, how we wait for the Lord, how we trust in the Lord, and how important that is because we have faith that God will always be with us and care for us and guide us on our life pathways. So listen more carefully for that in Psalm 27. You won't be in here for this sermon, but you can always catch it online. You can go see it later today. All right? All right, hey, thanks for coming up and being with me. Appreciate it. You can go with Lisa, for those of you who are four and in the fifth grade, to go to your class. Wait, what? Uh, follow Lisa. Yeah, Lisa will take you to, if, to your class. Psalm 27. As you listen to these words from the psalmist, psalms, a uh, song of praise and trust and confidence and of also asking for help, 
I want you to think about what's going on today in the Ukraine. Listen now to the word of God from Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and foes, they shall stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise up against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I ask of the Lord that I will seek after, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will set me high upon a rock. Now my head is lifted up above my enemies all around me, and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud, be gracious to me and answer me. Come, my heart says, seek his face. Your face, Lord, do I seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger, you who have been my help. Do not cast me off. Do not forsake me, O God of my salvation. If my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Do not give me up to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and they are breathing out violence. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. May God bless to us the reading of God's holy word. Amen. I think we might all be in agreement that we are living in serious times. For the past two years, we have been living and dying with a worldwide pandemic. We are currently witnessing a war in Ukraine that is heartbreaking, senseless, and threatens to expand beyond Ukraine's borders. Gas prices and inflation are at or near record levels. It is most certainly a serious time in human history. To be serious is to approach life in a solemn or sincere manner, not lightheartedly or superficially, but thoughtfully and with earnest intent. When we say we want to take someone seriously, it's usually an attempt to reframe the conversation from being lighthearted to something that transforms the tone of the conversation to matters that warrant a considered discussion. Now, sometimes comedians will include the line, but seriously, folks, as a segue to another topic or maybe another humorous bit. For instance, this statement, but seriously, folks, might be used to draw attention to a certain point one wishes to make that they may or may not <clears throat> that may or may not be serious in nature after a joke about something that is totally irrelevant. Like, I just flew in from Miami, and boy, are my arms tired. But seriously, folks, how is everyone tonight? See? Like that, right? Or this one. I like a good cheeseburger as much as anyone. But seriously, folks, does anyone really need a cheeseburger that weighs five pounds? So the question... The serious question for all of us today is what does it mean to take God seriously? The psalmist helps us to examine this question in chapter 27 with this approach described by Lindsay P. Armstrong as maintaining a gritty honesty as it dances back and forth between fear and trust. 
Taking God seriously requires of us an honest faith, a faith that holds both trust and doubt together. This psalm can be divided into three sections. Verses 1 through 6 are statements of confidence, certainty. Verses 7 through 12 are petitions for God's attention, God's instruction. And verses 13 and 14 serve as statements of testimony and encouragement. Robin Gallagher Branch describes this psalm as a combination of, quote, an affirmation of faith and an individual lament, expressing vibrant trust in God in a rough and tumble world bereft of safety nets. It shows a courageous life lived amid the onslaught onslaught of bullies described as oppressors, enemies, and false witnesses. So much of the language in Psalm 27 could easily become the cry of the Ukrainian people as they face Putin's brutal war of aggression. The psalmist is being transparent and honest in his relationship with God. He expresses his faith and doubt while facing enemies that threaten to encircle and invade. His once hopeful faith has become lament, wondering out loud why God is hiding God's face from him, pleading for God to not give him up to his adversaries. Just imagine yourself reading the following words as bombs fall on your city, on your neighborhood, on your home. The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? The psalmist expresses a confident trust in God in spite of all that is happening around him that suggests otherwise. And even when it seems that the psalmist has given up on God, he cries out, I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong. Let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Terry McDell Ott comments, quote, It's this honesty that keeps me turning to the Psalms during times of stress and fear. The psalmist, no spin version of faith, isn't trying to sell us anything or force an agenda on us. He's just straight up sharing his experience of God, and it's not all positive. This psalm speaks to all of us, just as it speaks to McDowell Ott. It speaks to those times when we all face difficulty, those times when we all experience profound grief and illness sucks the life right out of you. When the psalmist's life is falling apart, that is when the psalmist doubles down and takes God even more seriously. Hear his honest cries. Do not turn away from me. Do not cast me off or forsake me. Do not give me up to my adversaries, for I will wait for the Lord and I will take Courage. Taking God seriously in all of life is a very challenging endeavor. Now, you might be able to cry out, Whom shall I fear? Of whom shall I be afraid? from the comfort of your living room as you watch the news. But if you happen to be Ukrainian, these are not rhetorical questions. How might your faith be impacted if you suddenly became a refugee, fleeing for your very life? How might your understanding of God change while an invading army approaches? There is real tension between verse 1, which says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I fear? Shall I be afraid? And then verse 12, which says, Do not give me up to the will of my adversaries. 
for false witnesses have risen against me, and they were breathing out violence. You see, the psalmist demonstrates to us that real fear lives alongside an honest faith. Armstrong further comments that bona fide doubt holds hands with genuine trust. In this psalm, as in life, both are unavoidable. Rigorous, vigorous faith and animated doubt both insist that we take God seriously, ask God real questions, and depend upon God in tangible ways, while sifting wishful thinking about the God we want from the challenging wisdom of the God who is. We are able to take God seriously when our faith in God is grounded in the real world that we live in, in our real experiences of grace, pain, and doubt. Our faith in God is always to be lived out at the intersection of an honest relationship with God and with real life. I am grateful that Psalm 27 paints for us this helpful and hopeful picture of what that might look like in the world that we inhabit today. I, like many boomers, are children of the Vietnam era who grew up watching young men fight in a war on the other side of the world on the 6 o'clock news led by Walter Cronkite Monday through Friday. I remember processing what decision I might have to make when the, <clears throat> about the draft. And then the deep sense of relief I had when the war ended while I was still in high school. Once again, we find ourselves in a wartime posture as we witness the people of the Ukraine fighting for their very existence, with the words of the psalmist taking on new relevance yet again. Over the past couple of weeks, I was struck by a story in the news about a pianist in Poland playing John Lennon's song, Imagine. Those lyrics take on renewed relevance during this challenging time in our world's history. Here are a few of those words from the song Imagine by John Lennon. Imagine all the people living for today. Imagine all the people living life in peace. Imagine all the people sharing all the world. You may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you'll join us and the world will live as one. May it be so. Amen and amen. Let's pray together. Gracious God, we do pray for peace, wholeness, with a confident trust that we have in you. We pray for the Ukrainian people. We pray for wisdom for leaders on all sides, especially if that wisdom will lead to a stopping of this war. Lord, we pray for your love and wholeness to embrace that part of our world as you have embraced all of your world. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Please stand and sing with us.
We trust that God is able to do more than we can imagine. We trust that God is able to do more with us than we think we are capable of. And so we come to this time of offering, recognizing that God's gifts of grace are upon us and that God equips us for service and for salvation. So I invite you to consider what it is that you are called to do in great faith and trust that God will be able to do even more than what you believe. So let's pray together. Loving and gracious God, we dedicate what it is that we are, who it is that we are, what we have to bring uh, in faith that you are able to do more than we can imagine with that. Bless what we give. Bless who we are and our interactions with one another that love may flow forth and our witness to your great love would be the way that we live in the world and that you are made known in the world. We pray this in Christ. Amen. Amen. We come to this time of prayer, lifting up our joys and concerns as a community of faith, and I invite you to turn to page two of your parish notes, and you will see names of folks we pray for there on that list, and we add a few to that list this morning. Um, I think Pastor Keith talked with family of, of John and Mary Simpson yesterday, they were moving John and Mary back into their home uh, after some many months away, after they had experienced, I think, a fire at their home. And um, John fell uh, and broke his femur rather severely, I understand. So he is in surgery today to repair that. And the family is seeking full-time care for Mary uh, while John is in recovery uh, since he's been her primary caregiver. So 
We pray for that family system and that situation for healing and for good care. And this is our prayer to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We hold in prayer, as, as we learned that, we also learned that Pastor Bob Azarito at Sierra Vista Community Church, where they are also active, the Simpsons are, uh, Pastor Bob's having knee replacement surgery. So we pray for his healing as well. And this is our prayer to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We hold in prayer, um, we continue to hold in prayer Lynette and Claire and Chloe and the death of Mike. We had memorial service yesterday to celebrate the good news of resurrection and to grieve together and remember Mike's life. Uh, we hold that, uh, that family as they are uh, in this time uh, grieving together. And this is our prayer to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We hold in prayer Judy Flint, who's been diagnosed with acute leukemia um, and is in her last days. And we pray for that family as they are surrounding her and as they um, are grieving now. And this is our prayer to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We lift up prayers uh, for um, the, the family of Catherine Lewis. This is Kathy Lewis's former mother-in-law as she passed away on March 4. And we pray for them as, as they grieve and remember and celebrate Catherine's life. This is our prayer to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We hold in prayer uh, Jenna, who is a fiancé of Bep Vandermick's grandson, Charlie. Uh, she's hospitalized with uh, internal injuries following a skiing accident. And we pray for Jenna and for healing. This is our prayer to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And we lift up prayers for the McGregor family. Uh, Douglas McGregor, who's Gordon McGregor's brother, is in the hospital with stage 4 cancer. We pray for healing and wholeness and comfort for that family and for Doug. And this is our prayer to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And we pray for the many places in our world that are in distress, uh, filled with violence and war. Not only Ukraine, but also uh, continue to pray for many different places that have been in conflict from, uh, from Congo to Colombia, to Sudan, Ethiopia, Eritrea. Uh, we pray for peace. And this is our prayer to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And we pray for our continued commitment to receive and welcome refugees from every corner of the world. Um, I understand that not only are there refugees uh, from Ukraine on the U.S.-Mexico border waiting to get in, uh, there are refugees from Russia who are fleeing authoritarianism. And so we pray for peace and we pray for hospitality for those who are finding a new home. This is our prayer to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Let's pray together. You, O oh God, are our creator, and you made us for community, and you made us for communion with one another and with you. You call us to a path of love and justice, and you entrust us with gifts and talents and a planet that resources and provides in a world torn by greed and violence, we pray for peace. In our nation, communities, and homes, we are tense with conflict and division. We pray for mutual respect and forbearance and an ear for understanding. Within our own stressed souls, we are stretched thin by responsibilities, exhausted by conflict, disappointed to not be heard or seen or understood. And we pray for Sabbath, for rest and refreshment, for friends and neighbors who can and will understand. God of comfort, stand with us in these distressing times so that we may recall your promise that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come shall ever separate us from your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. You are a God of mercy and grace, and as war rages and bombs fall and innocent lives are destroyed, we pray for the people of Ukraine and for many others who long for the day when they can live safe and free. Prince of Peace, we pray that you would intervene on behalf of your people, beating swords into plowshares, spears into pruning hooks. 
diffuse our bombs, missiles, and nuclear warheads. Turn our hearts to your way of righteousness, stockpiling only goodwill and diplomatic relationships so that we can wage love rather than waging war. Compassionate God, you bear the pain of the world. Bless those who are sick, suffering, struggling. May we turn to you for help and healing instead of the shallow comforts and superficial sources of the world that they are so hip to sell us. Be the rock to which we cling, strengthening and steadying us when we are at risk of falling. Open us to your presence, especially when we are distracted and you feel hard to find. Eternal God, as we work and as we wait for your renewed creation, hear these prayers of your people. Now we lift up the prayer that Christ taught us by praying together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. I invite you please to stand as you are able for the closing benediction and congregational response. As you leave this place today, let us do so taking God seriously, placing our trust, our hope, and our very lives in God's loving embrace. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and evermore. Amen. Thank you.